All right, so let's get on to part four of this lecture, which is on multiplexes or MUX, which is MUX. We would pronounce it MUX. This should be a relatively simple part of the lecture, especially if you've understood the decoding and selecting parts earlier. The purpose of a MUX is to select the information from an input line and direct the information to a single output line. A MUX can also be called a data selector. In this case, we're showing four data lines coming in from I0 through to I3, and then we have this single output Y. This is representing a switch which can either be connected to any one of these inputs. And then the question would be, well, how is this actually controlled? Because obviously we've only got four lines coming in and we want to direct them directly to the output. So in order to control the MUX, we need to have select lines. In this case, because we have four inputs, we need to have two select lines. If we had only two inputs, we could do a single select line. And if we had eight inputs, then we would need three select lines. Can you see the pattern emerging here? We we'll also call this a four to one MUX, four inputs, one output, sometimes also represented as four times one MUX. So a typical MUX has N control inputs, that is from S to the N minus one through to S zero, and these are called selection inputs or select line. Two to the N information inputs, in this case we have two to the two inputs, as in four inputs. In general, I subscript two to the N minus one all the way down to I to the zero, and one single output. So that's an important thing. Previously for our decoders we've had multiple outputs, for the MUX we only have one output, Y. So although we can have two to the N inputs, we could also have M information inputs where we have M value less than two to the N and we have N selection inputs. In the case above, obviously N equaling two selection inputs allowed us to have two to the N equals two to the two equals four inputs coming in. So that's our four to one MUX with two selection inputs. Let's take a step backwards here and look at an even simpler example of the two to one line MUX, where we have two inputs, I0 and I1, and one output, Y again. And in this case, we only have a single selection variable, S. So nice and simple, two inputs, one selector, and the output, Y. Now we'll describe this relatively verbosely, but you'll immediately be able to understand it from the truth table. So if the selector S equals to zero, then we're going to select the input I zero. So it's going to be a connection like this for S equaling zero. Whilst when S equals to one, then we are selecting the output to equal to I one. So let's look at the overly verbose truth table and we'll write in all the possibilities. So we have when all of them are zero, all the way down to when they're all equaling one. Now in the case where select is equal to zero, remembering that we're going to see the I zero value. So whilst select is equal to zero, then the output Y is going to be just these values here, zero, one, zero, one. When select becomes one in these cases, then the output is equal to I one. So the output Y then becomes these values, zero, zero, one, one. But we don't need to write it out this verbosely, we can write it out much more simply as the selector and the output Y. When the selector is equal to zero, the output Y is equal to I zero. When the selector is equal to one, the output Y is equal to I one. In terms of the circuitry involved in this, since we have two inputs, I zero and I one, and we need one selection line, N equaling to one, then we can use the decoder in order to have a single selection line outputting two values from the decoder, the S naught and the S, and then combine it in ANDs in this way. So we have for the top one, S naught and I zero would be Y, or we combine it with this OR gate at the end, S and I one. Those first few points is saying, make sure you recognize the three parts to this, one being the decoder here, the next being the enabling circuits, and then finally the two input OR gate which combines it together. So in order to conceptually get a basis for this multiplexer expansion into larger inputs, what we're really doing is we're combining the enabling circuit and the OR gate into a two by two AND OR circuit. So read this as two AND, two input AND, like this, 
this is the count of how many of those two input ands there are. So in the first case we had two, in general we'll have all the way down to n two input AND gates, and then all of these are combined together into in a big OR. So in general for a two to the n to one line multiplexer, we'll need a n to two to the n line decoder, and two to the n two input AND gates, all combined in an OR gate at the end. So let's go back to our four to one line multiplexer, where we have four inputs coming in, we have these control lines, and then we have that single output going out. And in order to create that four to one line multiplexer, we need a two input to four line decoder. There's two lines come in and four lines will come out of this decoder. And then we also need our two to the two, which is four, two input AND gates. So here's our four input AND gates. One, two, three, four. They're all two input, one, two inputs, all being combined together in an OR at the end. And of course, this is the two to four line decoder. But as an exercise, let's think about the truth table that would result from this. When we have S1 and S2 both being zeros, then what do we have? Let's say zero, zero. So the output from this decoder is one, zero, zero, zero. Then the only AND gate that gets a one into it is this top one. So that's going to output whatever I zero is. If I zero is zero, then it's gonna output zero. If I zero is one, it's gonna output one. And then all of these are basically going to be deselected. So the only output Y will give is I zero. And then intuitively, we can see that when we have these other values, we will get I one. So instead of the top one being selected, when S1 is zero and S0 is one, then we will be getting this one being selected. And for one zero as the selection lines, we'll have I2 and then finally I3. And of course, this value here, zero, zero, is the same as the index. Zero, one, 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 zero, two, one, one. This gives a three. That's the introduction to the multiplexer function blocks for now. And I'll see you in part five of this lecture.